Welcome to another installment of RuneScape quests that are being turned into creative audiobooks. Today's quest is Imp Catcher. As the adventurer is walking through the dense forest west of Lumbridge Castle, he saw something particularly out of place. There was a red-looking imp running towards him, followed by a young wizard apprentice. Get back here! He yelled as the imp got closer to the adventurer who was then in the way of the imp. No! The imp exclaimed as the adventurer picked up the little demon. Hey, wise guy! You gotta let me go! I'm innocent, I tell ya! You got the wrong demon! Once the wizard caught up, he took a moment to breathe, and then he spoke. Thank you for catching him. The adventurer glances back at the demon, and then back to the wizard. What did he do? Hey, don't listen to us, hymns! He wants to eat me! I'm the most honorous if there is, Gubna! Please! The wizard, catching his breath, responds. One of our elders was messing with his captured lesser demon on the top floor of our tower, and the spell he cast rebounded summoning hundreds of these little devils. And you stole Elder Mizgog's magical bead, the wizard said, pointing at the imp. Is this true? said the adventurer, as he was looking at the imp he was holding. I'd never if I stole something from that wizard Wetsis. You'd think I'd have it on me. Do I look like I got it? The imp replied, looking confused at the adventurer. The wizard exclaims, You filthy liar! As the wizard throws his hands into some kind of dance. Asmu dieth captes! The wizard said, as this orb of energy flew towards the imp. Oh shit! As the imp turned to ash, dropping a black spherical object to the floor. Wah! What is that? The adventurer exclaimed. The wizard, adjusting his robes, walks over and picks up the object. This, the wizard shows to the adventurer, is a magical bead. It used to be defined as a crystal before its power waned over time. That demon ate it, said the wizard. What exactly does it do? These crystals were created by the head of the order, the Order of Wizards, to protect our tower from destruction after some Zamorakians burnt the building down. Our own Archmage Cedridor used an incantation to create them, and over the years, Elder Lotharius and Elder Mizgog have looked over them. Until today, when hundreds of imps broke through our seal unintentionally and stole the damn things. That's really impressive. I had no idea there was an Order of Wizards, or a tower. I'd love to go and see it, asked the adventurer. I'm afraid there's no more time for chit-chat. There's still three missing, and I'm not going to keep the elders waiting. I'll gladly help you, smiled the adventurer. Hmm, you did manage to catch that first imp, said the wizard, as the wizard was rubbing his arm. While he was thinking, blurted out, Fine, I'll take you to the tower. You'll need to ask permission to help with this effectively. Elder Lotharius and Elder Mizgog could give you honorary status. Let's get going then. Traveling through the forest, there is so much wildlife to see. It's quite a great sight. On the walk to the wizard's tower, the adventurer notices a party of friends. One warrior, one ranger, and one wizard. It must be nice to have some friends, he thought as he pressed on. Coming up to a large bridge, the wizard apprentice looks to the adventurer. This'll be where we part ways. I need to check one last area nearby before I report to the elders. Just head to the top floor of the tower to speak with them. The wizard starts to walk away. Oh, tell them Makul sent you. Makul said as he wandered off. As the adventurer turns his attention to the enormous stone bridge and made note of the books and the crates alongside his path leading up to the wizard's tower. This'll be a good one, I just know it. As he walks across. While he approached the wizard's tower, a wizard wearing a white robe approaches him. Halt. What is your business here? The wizard asked. I have a message and services to offer to the elders. Makul had sent me. Then we're glad you're here, friend. Head on up to the bed. The front door is over there. The wizard said with a wholesome smile. Upon opening the door to the tower, the adventurer hears all sorts of quills writing on scrolls, with many wizards sitting at desks being invested in their studies. There's definitely quite an ambience about. Noticing an old bookshelf to his left, he looks to his right to see a spiraling staircase. Aha! Perfect! He said as the scribes all stop to shush him. Heading up the staircase to the next floor, the adventurer notices several rooms that belong to powerful wizards, with most doors being locked, all except one, to which the adventurer could see the wizard messing with an orb of magic. The adventurer walks up one more flight of stairs, to be on the final floor, where he meets two elders staring at a map of this part of Gilinor. 
Hmm, that's not it. Perhaps we send the research teams here to locate it, said Elder Lotharius. You're not wrong, but we're running out of time. We still haven't found one, replied Elder Mizgog, as McCool brushes past the adventurer. Please excuse me. And up to the two elders. Apprentice McCool, there and back again. I have the black bead thanks to this guy. Mackle said with excitement as he directed both the elders' attention to the adventurer. Is that so? Well, thank you, dear boy, said Lotharius. You have our thanks. And Mizgog smiled. Have you found any others? Asked Mizgog. I had checked Zanaris as instructed, but the imps haven't fled there. Makul responded. How many are left? Said the adventurer. We must find the remaining three, white, yellow, and red. I wanted to offer my services to the Order of Wizards to help you find these beads. And will gladly accept which is given. I'm Elder Lotharius. As he put his hands towards the adventurer. Pleased to meet you. Now back to business. We need to continue our efforts to find these beads as soon as possible," said Elder Mizgog. Right. right. Lotharius and McCall responded. Mizgog then points at the map. We know that there is an imp somewhere in the tower, and we have yet to find it. It has the red bead. We also know one of the imps carrying the white bead made it to Draenor, and I'd rather not take the chances of causing that town any more pain, especially with the looming threat from that vampire in that bloody mansion. Apprentice Team Alpha have located another imp carrying the final yellow bead and are currently scouting the Lumbridge Swamp. Lotharius, if you and our newfound assistant could go to Draenor, Makul and myself will check the tower here, and assuming we're all successful, we will be able to put this tragic occurrence behind us. With everyone in agreement, the adventurer and Lotharius start their walk across the bridge as Makul waves to Lotharius. Right. Before I chased that imp running out of the castle, I remembered seeing the imp run down the stairs but not out the door. So it's safe to say we only need to check a few floors. You're becoming more than an apprentice every day, replied Mizgog as they both started heading towards the basement to find the imp. Lotharius and the adventurer making their way to Draenor decided to chat while on their way. You're an elder, huh? That must be so exciting. It has its moments. I'm more intrigued about you, though. Who are you? There's not much to say. I woke up here. It was almost like a dream. This man in Lumbridge, named Hans, he welcomed me and said they found me near the riverbed unconscious, so they brought me to the Lumbridge Castle Courtyard. Shortly after that, I found a cook. He was in serious trouble as he didn't have the ingredients to bake a cake, but how silly it sounds. I did help him, though. Curious. Do you not remember anything from before? I wish I did. I don't know if I have friends or had friends. I don't know who I am. However, ever since I've woken up, I've wanted to help others, and I do find happiness in it. Some people live their whole life in the pursuit of happiness. I would not dwell on this, my boy. Whatever the past may be, you can rise above it, and it sounds like you are. Well, what about you? What's your story, Elder? Please, call me Lotharius. I'm one of the Order, the Order of Wizards. We strive with our goal for the glory of Ceridomen. I started out as an apprentice the same as McCool. During my time as an apprentice, I learned a lot about the threats of the world, and I knew my place within it was to help put a stop to it. My teacher was Archmage Cerador. He's a powerful wizard and a good friend. He saved my life a few times while I was still learning, and quite arguably naive. He sounds amazing. You could say that. How long have you been working with Elder Mizgog? We've been working with each other for years now, studying ways to protect the tower. There used to be three of us. What happened? We used to be within the councilship of the wise old man, which is not his name, nor the title the people of Gilanor gave him. He also assisted our order until one day the assistance stopped, and he became quite distant. And then one day, he stopped coming to the council entirely. What became of him? I am not sure. No one has seen him in some time, replied Lotharius as the two travelers arrived at the city of Draenor. This place sure is pretty, but there's barely anyone out and about. With the looming threat from the vampire, I doubt much happiness remains. It has been replaced with meekness. I suppose one problem at a time then. 
but we should have an easier time finding this imp with the lack of people. Replied the adventurer as they continued to get closer to the bank of Draenor. If I was an imp, where would I hide? What we know about them is that imps are very much a lesser type of demon, but a demon they remain. And as such, they prefer magic and darkness. Replied Lotharius. The adventurer then looks to his left. Perhaps we should ask the townspeople about this. Indeed. Let's. The two walk to the nearby marketplace as they see a man with a stylish hat packing up his store stall. Excuse me, said Lotharius, as the man was clearly jumpy and startled, turning around quickly to the two. Duh! You shouldn't sneak up on a man like that. Now with the vampires around, are you mad? Said the stranger. I could very well be. <laughs> Funny. Now what do you want? We're looking for an imp who's stolen a bead shaped like crystal. Without it, the wizard's tower is defenseless. Replied the adventurer. The man, looking a little annoyed, and also keeps looking to the north, responds. Look, I haven't seen no imp. And even if I had, I don't have the time. I'm sad to hear about the wizard's tower. It's important to these folks. But we have bigger threats lurking right now. Look, I'm packing up my shop and getting the hell out of here. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. The man said, as he finished packing up his belongings onto a cart pulled by a donkey. As the cart started to move in an eastward direction. There's a farmer. He should have been here long enough to know if anything is out of place. As Lotharius pointed northwest of their location. Hello there, farmer. Could you help us? Yeah, what is it? The farmer, chewing on some kind of tobacco, responds. As long as you ain't here to steal my seeds, how can I help you? replied the farmer. We're looking for an imp that's carrying a magical bead. It almost looks like a crystal. It would be rather small, easily concealable, said Lotharius. The farmer, taking his time, starts to scratch his neck hair. Hell, the only thing on this side of Drainer that's demonic could be our good friend Aggie. She sells potions, but she ain't evil like a demon. Where is she? Martha, get my spade. No, 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 no need. We'll go and ask Aggie about this imp ourselves. Don't sweat it. Where could we find her shop? I don't see it here within the market. Lotharius asked. Well, the mayor of Drainer don't really like witches, even if she is good folk. She sells her potions out of her house on the other side of the market, just northeast of here. Thank you. As the two travelers turned away and walked towards Aggie's house. Hey, you boys be careful. There's a vampire out there. I think we can manage, Lotharius said out loud, winking at the adventurer. I've never faced a vampire before. Me neither. As the two travelers approach Aggie's potions and dyes shop, they can hear things inside rustling and shouting as they sprint near the door to listen. To paint a picture, there is an imp that wields a dueling wand with a stylish silver belt with a white bead attached to it while Aggie is tied up in the middle of the room. You just stays quiet. We'll have no issues, witch. This wand puts me in charge. I'm aware. Aggie responds as she's currently sitting in a cauldron that's slowly cooking her alive. See? You messed up. You thought you could stop this handsome, devilishly smart imp. <laughs> as the imp circles the cauldron. You really like talking. Quiet, you. You'll be the perfect temperature soon, and I'm working up quite the appetite. Exclaimed the imp, the adventurer turning to Lotharius. We need to save her. He whispered, Lotharius looking towards the ground, obviously in deep thought, finally looks up at the adventurer. I think I have a plan. Go round to the window, and... As he picks up a rock, get ready to use this, instructed Lotharius. I'm on it! The adventurer eagerly replied, scurrying off to the other side of the building. Lotharius then knocks on the door. After some silence, he hears some rustling and a vase breaking inside. There's a response. Who is it? Asked a voice. Pizza delivery from Drain Oreos. Answered Lotharius. Leave it on the doorstep and get the hell out of here. A voice interrupted. You have to pay for your pizza. I'll pay with your blood if you don't leave. What about my tip? I really threw this pizza together with love. That's it. I'm coming for you. As a rock breaks the window, knocking the imp out cold. The adventurer running around the corner. Yes, yes, yes. That was excellent, Lotharius. As the two enter the building with more praise about what happened being told, the two pause and turn to Aggie, who is still sitting in a cauldron coming to a boil. 
If it's not too much trouble, could you untie me? Oh, oh, oh yes. I'm sorry, sorry. Aggie. Okay, yeah, of course. The adventurer puts out the fire using a water bucket nearby. I suppose thanks are in order, said Aggie. We are most certainly glad to help, replied Lotharius. The adventurer helping Aggie out of the cauldron starts to untie her body. How did this happen? Aggie, turning to look at the adventurer, responds. The imp showed up trying to sell me that bead for some of my dyes. He told me about wanting to change his appearance. In our conversation, he caught me off guard and stole my wand. As Aggie bends over and grabs her wand out of the unconscious imp's hand, Aggie then casts a fire spell, disintegrating the imp entirely and only leaving ashes, the white belt, and the white magical bead. I got the bead, exclaimed the adventurer, Lotharius looking at the belt. I'd like this. May I have it? Yes, and what's that white object? Asked Aggie. Lotharius taking the reins explains the entire situation and what led them to this point. How adventurous. You should be on your way and save your tower. If you ever need dyes, you're welcome to stop by. Aggie said. Thanks, you've been a great help. Replied the adventurer as the two travelers walked away from Aggie's shop with Aggie waving at them. We make a good team. I think so too. Now let's get this back to the tower, replied the adventurer. Wait, I can take this bead back. You should head to the Lumbridge Swamp and help locate the last bead. As Lotharius and the adventurer say goodbye to each other, for now, and head off in their respective directions. As the adventurer comes up to the Lumbridge Swamp, he can see huge rats and huge frogs in the distance. Oh no. Traveling through the swamp, the adventurer looks for clues as to where the imp could be and he starts to ponder where the wizards are. 25 minutes go by. Strange, the adventurer thought. He's traveled nearly halfway through the swamp and there's no trace of anything except from giant rats and giant frogs. The adventurer then finds some footprints through the mud in the bog area of the swamp. Passing by a huge stone object with a crack in it, the adventurer finds even more footprints. As he follows the path, he starts to smell something rather repulsive. Goodness gracious, what is that smell? said the adventurer as he covered his nose. That's the smell of success, a voice said, as an older gentleman came out from behind a huge hedge. I just sold three candles, my day is perfect. Pardon? The stranger smiles at the adventurer and turns towards him. I sell candles to people brave enough to enter the swamp depths. You can't survive without a candle down there, haha, <laughs> said the candle seller. The depths? Yes. As he points to a medium-sized hole in the ground near him behind the hedge. Not many people ever find a reason to go down there, but it exists mainly as a training ground for Slayer Masters. As the adventurer kneels down by the crevice, he glances back at the candle salesman. You said that you sold some candles recently. To whom did you sell them? I sold three of them to some wizards. Are they down there now? Well, yeah, they needed to chase a demon that fell into the hole. It was hilarious. I'll buy a candle off of you. I need to follow them. That'll be 1,000 gold pieces. Uh, what's with the price? I'd never give anyone over 50 gold pieces for a candle. Supply and demand, my friend. The adventurer thinking about it. Fine. Here's your dirty money. Now how do I ignore the horrible smell down there? You don't. It's natural swamp gas that's highly flammable. Flammable? I want my money back. No refunds. As the man walks away quickly. 4,000 in one day, my wife's sure to come back. <laughs> Dang, damn it. <gasps> well, here goes nothing. As the adventurer grabs the rope and swings down into the depths with his candle, landing on his feet while still trying to cover his nose, he looks around the wide room with many large fire ants and other horrendous creatures lurking about. Where on earth could those wizards be? The adventurer then hears a cry from nearby and rushes over to the location. The adventurer finds himself approaching a wizard trapped under some fallen rocks. Wizard, are you okay? No, my leg is stuck and I'm bleeding. After looking her over, Are you part of the Order of Wizards? Asked the adventurer. Yes, I'm apprentice to Mera. Why? I've come to help you find that pesky imp. Elder Lotharia sent me. Thank goodness! That's why I'm in this mess that Imp is responsible. He acquired a crossbow made out of bone and shot the foundation nearby holding these rocks up. As she gestures to her leg and the cave ceiling, the adventurer, putting his level 5 strength to good use, starts to move the boulders off the wizard. Let's get you topside and I'll look for the others. A little while after creating a harness out of rope, 
the adventurer climbs out of the depths to use a hedge nearby as an anchor and pulley, and successfully gets the apprentice Tamara topside without any further injuries. The adventurer then rips chunks off of the apprentice's robes to use those as rags to cover and stop the bleeding. After he stops the bleeding, the adventurer grabs the rope. Stay here. I'll be back with the others and that bead. As he leaps down into the depths once again. Oh, the smell. Running north and then eastward, the adventurer passes several different types of crazy looking creatures. I really don't want to come across that swamp gas. As just ahead, he saw an apprentice unconscious being dragged by another. The one being dragged was covered in ash and burns. Hey, hey! The adventurer said running over. Are they okay? Hey there, name's Felix. What's your stranger? He said raising his wizard hat. My name is... What was that? Said the adventurer as Felix continued to pull Cordelia. It's the same thing that happened to Cordelia. Exploding swamp gas. She ran into another area trying to capture an imp we were chasing. Unbeknownst to us, the corridor was full of the swamp gas, and with the open flame candles, we had it went boom, replied Felix. Well, I'm glad I found you. I found Tamara and helped her out of the swamp dungeon. She's above the entrance and need a medical assistance. Well, help me get her out of here and we'll try to find this imp together. Deal. After using the harness to pull an unconscious Cordelia, Felix explains to Tamara what happened to her. You are sure you'll be okay? Asked Felix. Yeah. Our friend here did a good job stopping me from bleeding out. She said smiling. Go get that imp, Felix. Felix, nodding in agreement, turns to the adventurer. Let's get back at it. Let's get on our way then. As Felix and the adventurer head back down the rope. I'd like to warn you that this impling is armed. He found some kind of crossbow made from bone. Ingenious invention, but deadly for us. Felix mentioned, as the two were continuing through the swamp depths. Not that way! As the adventurer turns around abruptly and decides to follow Felix instead. Ha <laughs> ha Thanks. Coming up to a large empty room, they see the impling staring at a glowing wall. That's a bit odd now, isn't it? I wouldn't know, but be on guard. The last one me and Lotharius found was trying to eat a witch. The adventurer said, as they creeped up on the imp. As they were right behind the imp, they noticed that the imp was in a trance-like state, and it looked disoriented. As they got closer, they could hear whispers coming from the glowing wall, but at this distance, it almost looks like the wall is crying. I don't like this place. I don't think we should linger. Let's grab this imp and get out of here. Agreed. Responded Felix. As the adventurer grabs the bead out of the imp's hand and puts it in his pocket, Felix then picks up the imp to carry it. As they were leaving the room, the adventurer heard a voice in his head. Your path is intertwined with pain and death. Gothic shall balance the darkness. Ceratomen will strike in glory. Samarok will betray with dismay. Kilinor. As the adventurer got goosebumps, but shook them off. As the two got to the rope leading out of the depths. What should we do about this imp? Asked the adventurer. He's unconscious and disoriented. You have the yellow bead. Let's leave it here. As he drops the imp to the ground, and as the imp touches the ground, the imp disintegrates. After the two climb up the rope, they're greeted by Lotharius as he is healing Tamara and Cordelia. I see you were successful. That's good. Yes, we were. This should be the final bead. It is. Ms. Gog has the other three in place and he's waiting for this one. Help me please, Felix. Of course. Approaching the bridge to the wizard's tower, Tamara was finally able to stand without assistance, and Cordelia was awake and well. You go on. I'd like to speak privately with our friend. Felix, Tamara, and Cordelia, nodding in agreement, continue walking towards the tower. I've been thinking about it. We only just met you, and you're one of the first outsiders to lend such a helping hand for the Order of Wizards with no promise of a reward. What this means is I'd like to help you. You said you didn't know where you're from or have memories. I find it my duty to help you on this quest. Will you accept my offer? As Lotharius puts out his hand in friendship, the adventurer thinking about it, looking down at Lotharius' second attempt at a handshake, responds, Yes, Lotharius. Thank you. As he shakes Lotharius' hand. Good. 
then let us rendezvous with Ms. Gog. As the two new friends walk towards the tower. As they approach the entrance of the tower, Ms. Gog and McCall are waiting for them patiently. We found the pesky imp within the basement of the tower. Archmage Cedridor is the reason we found it without a hitch. I really appreciate your assistance. Thank you for finding him, McCool, said Ms. Gog. To be honest, I'm glad I could help. But there's no way I could join the Order of the Wizards, is there? Said the adventurer. I am not in a position of power to offer you a place within the Order of Wizards. I can, however, give you honorary status. As he handed the last bead to Ms. Gog. Let's put this back in place, replied Lotharius. As the group got to the second floor, the adventurer pauses while the others go on. This floor was seen earlier with the adventurer witnessing a wizard messing with an orb of magic before. Now, there's a new sight. Tamara, Felix, and Cordelia are in the room speaking with the wizard. You should have been there, Master Treyborn. In our efforts, we were successful in finding the imp. Cordelia turns around, locking eyes with the adventurer, and walks outside of the room, closing the door behind her. Hmm. You'll want to continue up the stairs. This is a personal matter. She says, as the adventurer realizes his mistake, shrugs it off, and continues to walk up the stairs. Back at the top of the tower, Elder Mizgog puts the final bead in its slot. As he does this, there's a small earthquake, and as the adventurer looks out the nearby window, he sees a shield going up past the window and finally out of his view. The shield, once in place, becomes transparent and to the naked human eye, undetectable. The wizard's tower is safe once more. All the beads are back in order and the protective shield around the wizard's tower is strong once again. You have my sincerest thanks. Here, this amulet will serve you well as it has served me. Ms. Gog, my friend, I wanted to wish you good luck and farewell. I've decided to start traveling Gilanor with the adventurer. He has to find out who he is, and to do so he needs help. He helped us, and so I see it fit to return the favor. What say you? Ms. Gog, taking a moment to think. I would prefer your ongoing help here with me, Lotharius, but I will not stop you from making your own choice. If you choose to go with him, well... I hope to see you again. I will, my good friend. As the two wizards give each other a bro hug. I may not have known you as long as Mizgog, but I will miss you. Good luck on your new travels, Lotharius. I must get back to my studies. Farewell. As Mizgog then turns his attention to McCool. Now then, McCool, we must turn our collaborative efforts towards Drainer. That vampire must be dealt with. We should be off. If we're going to adequately do this, I'm going to need stronger gear. We must head towards the dwarves, then. They are talented craftsmen. Where are they located? It's about a month's journey away, near a city called Falador. In agreement, they both head down the stairs. As the two friends were leaving, they heard the tower door open, and Lotharius turns around. Be safe, Lotharius. I bring me one hell of a story to tell, yells McCall. I will indeed.
And that's the story of how me and Lotharius met. Since then, we've accomplished so much. And so little at the same time. Anyways, thank you for listening, Kaylee. That's an interesting story and all, but your cat is chewing up our furniture. Please leave. <laughs>